Hey, this is going to be the first installment of Handicapped Etiquette with your host, D.P. Melito. What is Handicapped Etiquette, you might ask? But before we begin, though, as always, I'm supposed to ask you to please subscribe to the YouTube channel and follow me on Instagram. I know, I know, I hate shilling, but it helps get our message out. Anyway, Handicapped Etiquette, what is it? It's basically just a set of common sense rules for dealing with someone disabled you may come across in your daily activities, right? Unfortunately, I've begun to notice that these rules are neither as common nor as sensible as I previously thought. So, from time to time, we'll post a short video detailing one of the situations you, normal Jane or Joe, might find yourself in when dealing with disabled people in public, or in private, or in VR, because, you know, we're everywhere. Okay, great. Let's dive right in. This one is called the Disability Dash. Now, I'm sure there's a few of you out there who are saying, Damn, I know exactly what you're talking about. No need to explain. But for everyone else, I think more information is necessary. So I'm going to explain. Aren't you lucky? You lucky, lucky viewers. <laughs> anyway, the Disability Dash, right? Some of you watching have even done it. Maybe unwittingly, maybe not. But I guarantee you'll know exactly what I mean. Now, say you see someone with a cane, a walker, a wheelchair, a limp, a missing limb, anything really, right? And they're headed to the ATM, to the register to check out, or even the restroom, right? There is always someone who feels the need to rush ahead, right? Hussein bolts out of nowhere, leaps ahead, and then nonchalantly acts as if like, oh, oh I was totally ahead of you. You just didn't see me. Yeah, yeah. I left my soul in line, holding my spot. No, 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 I wasn't cutting. What do you mean? I have a friend who's in a wheelchair. And there you have the basic premise of the disability dash. Mm -hmm. First, let me just begin by saying, you're not as slick as you think you are. I promise. I know, that cute little, oh, oh, uh, sorry, were, were you so sorry? Oh, just getting my 10K steps in. <laughs> you know how it is. Bit, bit. Mm. Yes, despite your Daniel Day-Lewis level acting, we all know the truth. Even a blind disabled person knows what you're doing. Yeah, they can hear it. Your shame. For some inexplicable reason, people seem to think that anyone who is handicapped in any way will not only physically move slower to their destination, but also perform their task at said destination slower than Congress on a Tuesday. Or Friday. Or really any day. Anyway, this goes double for the bathroom. Yes, for some reason, there was this rumor started long ago that has now spread further than the story of Slender Man at a teenage sleepover. And that is that handicapped people stay in the bathroom for eons. Yes, apparently we uh, take off all of our clothes in alphabetical order, uh, put them back on, right, then sort all of our medications and, and lay them out, I assume, on a disgusting little sink that's there. Oh, and of course, uh, we call all our other disabled friends on FaceTime just to show them how badly we're sticking it to the normals. Right? Who have, of course, by that time, definitely urinated on themselves while waiting outside and shaking their heads and making the hmm, hmm, hmm sound at least 17 times before we even think about exiting. So, haha -ha for all of them. Look, here's the big secret. Disabled people take about just as much time as anyone else at the ATM, at the register, and even in the bathroom. And even if they do take a little bit longer, what are we talking about? 30 seconds? A minute? Two minutes? Even if you're delayed by five minutes in your busy schedule of going to Orange Theory and buying free trade oat milk, so what? I seriously doubt that on your way to time-sensitive, life-saving brain surgery, you said, oh, I, I better stop at the ATM and get some cash. Gotta tip them nurses. No, of course not. And if you did, you're a bad surgeon. The truth of the matter is, is that by doing the disability dash, right, you are trading those uh, maybe 30 seconds for making someone handicapped feel disabled, reminding them that they are different, reminding them that some people see them as some sort of obstacle to be navigated around. Okay, is that really worth the meager time savings that you might not even be getting? Because look, no one is falling for the whole, oh, I just got here, act. All right, we all know what the disability dash looks like because we've seen it a million times. Okay? And I know, it's not easy to ignore that stereotype that's burned into your brain. I do it sometimes. You know, see someone using a cane walking up to the register, and my brain automatically, without thinking, says, better get there first. No! 
No. Bad brain. Bad brain. No crossword puzzle for you. <laughs> Just do your best. Try to remind yourself when you see someone disabled that a few minutes out of your day could mean the difference between making that person feel ostracized, feel like a burden, and letting them have one day where they can just do their stuff and not be reminded about that thing that they could never forget. Trust me, they know. They don't need to be reminded while they're buying paper towels and avocados. So the next time you have that instinct to run the disability dash, right, stop, have a think, and let's try to bridge that gap. We can walk over the bridge together instead of you running ahead while I bring up the rear. Because everyone loves bringing up the rear. Thanks for watching. Next time on Handicapped Etiquette with me, your host, Daniel P. Melito, we'll address another one of the common things people with disability deal with on a regular basis. If you like the video, as always, comment, write an email, you know I'll respond. And please share, subscribe, like the video, okay? And as always, be kind, rewind, keep on keeping on, and we'll talk soon.